All right, let's go over updating Mint uh, or Linux Mint uh, because it has a really neat front end for updating any packages. Uh, well, I'll first show you what to do prior to updating, how to update, and then also kind of doing some special things. Like in a past video, I showed how to update the kernel. Well, in Linux Mint, it's even easier than that. You just select which one you want through their update manager. So uh, the update manager is what this video is all about over the Linux Mint Cinnamon uh, update manager, which is really probably one of the best ones I've found in the market because it kind of takes the complex and makes it really simple for pretty much everybody out there. So with all that said, let's get into it. I do live stream every Monday and Friday, so if you have a question for me, be sure and stop in to my Twitch channel and ask me live. And if you'd like to check out these streams after the fact, you can always head over to Chris Titus Tech Streams and check out my entire archive over there. All right, let's update our Linux Mint here. Uh, we'll first start out by going into our little start menu here, coming in over to administration, scrolling down. Now, normally we just go right to update manager, but with any system, whether it's Linux, Windows, whatever you have, it, you're doing any kind of updates, typically I like to go ahead and pull up TimeShift, which is our backup program. Uh, one, I just like to make sure I have an up-to-date recent one. If you haven't, definitely check that out. If you're not sure how to set up TimeShift, I'll link uh, to the video about TimeShift and doing backups up there. Uh, but Mint has it all kind of baked in so you don't have to do much for installation and it's really nice. So set all that up, uh, everything's good. Today's the 13th at the time of recording and uh, we have a backup for the 13th. So we'll come back into administration and launch into update manager. Now, I just wanted to show the long way just in case you actually took off this little icon from your desktop. You could also just click it to launch update manager, but uh, either way, I, I typically like minimal notifications and not having this bloated up, but you know what, I don't mind the update manager being there, so. Uh, all right, so we have some updates. Uh, first thing we do is just a refresh, just to see anything that's happened. This is the same as going into the command line for a lot of you expert users and saying apt update. It just kind of refreshes the cache. Is there any new packages? And they say, yep, there's about eight new packages. So not much, we have a system D upgrade, uh, Adobe Flash, SnapD, ooh, uh, Pulse Audio, Lib, IP Root, File, and Chromium Browser. Uh, a lot of packages that uh, need to be updated. Not too much though. So if you don't see Linux in here, uh, as far as like the Linux kernel, you don't really even need to reboot after installing updates. So we can just go ahead and say install updates and we'll go ahead and authenticate with our password. And this will go through and install all the updates. If you wanna see what's going on, you can actually click this and kinda of get a play-by-play a -play as far as the actual installation goes. And by doing details, you can see what it looks like from the terminal aspect. This is the same as doing APT upgrade. Uh, so just, I wanted to show those two aspects of it. Uh, the front end that Mint puts on their systems is very intuitive and it basically makes it to where you don't have to jump into terminal. It does all this stuff uh, so the end user only sees like a little progress bar. It's much more intuitive than Windows. And uh, for those people scared of terminal, you don't even need to jump into terminal as it runs all those commands for you in the background, which is fantastic. And there we go, we're up to date. Now there is a couple other things here. If we go into edit, uh, system snapshots, that actually brings up time shift again. So you can actually, do a shortcut to it here as well. Uh, from here, you can actually change your Linux kernel. So I actually did a whole video about changing the kernel. Um, and if you wanna do a more uh, recent kernel, you can always go into that and go, you know what, I need to install this kernel. Or you wanna go to a 5.0 kernel, you can come into here. So this is just depends on what you're doing with your system. If there's certain hardware that's not compatible or certain really new hardware, you probably should go to the most recent kernel. So uh, a good example of this is if you get like an uh, RX 570 XT, uh, or is it just a 5700 XT? The 5700 XT from AMD is a, a brand new graphics card. It needs a recent kernel. 
and 5.3 would suffice for that. So they, you can actually do kernel updates from here as well through your update manager. Uh, another thing, it's not gonna show right here because it's not released yet, but once Linux Mint 20 drops, we can actually upgrade to it uh, and do a lot of just really cool stuff. Uh, other things in here, let's go ahead and pull up software sources. These are all the repositories and PPAs and things of that nature we'll use. So if you wanna review any PPAs you've installed, this is just external programs that aren't baked into here. You can actually add them right into here. Uh, any additional repositories you could add into here. Uh, keys, basically if you add a repository, you need a corresponding key to update, uh, which it would, would add those right here. So it's really nice to have this whole graphic user interface uh, for a lot of the things we would traditionally do in terminal in Linux on, on Linux Mint. Uh, now, as far as anything here, uh, th this is maintenance. I actually haven't really used this, but you can actually remove packages, add missing keys, remove duplicate entries. There's a lot of neat little tools in the maintenance section that you can actually do. But getting over into the actual official, official repositories, this is where you could actually just kind of change things around. So for me, I need to probably go ahead. Every once in a while, I might come in here and just see if I have slow download speeds, I'll click on this first one and then just do a sort by speed and see if there's a faster uh, repository out there for me. So if you're having a really slow download, definitely check your repositories. I bet this one's a bit slow uh, as I am getting a little slower than usual. So let's see what we get. Right now, I think I'm using os6.org. Uh, right now, Eurowise CDN is actually faster than anything out there. And I can tell you right now, there's not gonna be anything faster because these are outside the country, so. Uh, we're gonna actually go with it, this one, the, the CDN from them. We'll hit okay. It'll go ahead, flash through, and update the cache. And then we're also look at this base one too. Let's see what we get on it. And really nothing really has changed on this one. It's still pretty fast, kind of funny. I'm actually in Texas and uh, both the Texas mirrors scored lower than the LA mirror. Uh, so it's kind of funny how all that works, but this is probably a, a CDN, which means it has multiple servers and it just that's where it connects through so uh anyways we'll just go ahead and keep it at five megs on the download there i think that's pretty good and uh we'll accept that and move on and finally we'll just refresh our cache one last time just some new mirrors just keep things up to date everything else looks pretty darn good here uh i'll go ahead and close out of the sources uh, one other thing you might see in here when the official one comes out is the full update to Mint 20 that should be coming out in the, probably the next couple months. So definitely this summertime, you'll see it actually pop into the, the menus here. And then we can simply upgrade to it and be off and running with the newest Mint. Now, uh, I often get asked, should I update all the time? And the answer to this is it depends. Uh, it depends on what you want, if there's a certain package that you feel like to update, but there's no need to religiously update like every day or every week. Uh, heck, you could go a month or even two months and not worry about updates. A and even longer, if let's say you leave this computer off for a really extended period of time, come back to it, you could easily up update then. You don't need to turn on your computer just to update it every month if, if you don't want to. And that was Update Manager. I really, really enjoy this method of updating just simply because it keeps it simple, stupid. <laughs> or keeps it stupid simple. KISS is the principle it uses, which I really enjoy. So if a new years are coming to Linux, this makes updating and whatnot stay, you know, easy for them. And also, it doesn't really annoy them. A lot of times you'll see that icon change. If you don't want to update your system that often, you have that option, no matter what Linux version you're in. Uh, and for me, if I didn't update maybe once a month, I probably would go ahead and remove the update manager from that taskbar, just so I don't see that icon change from like the green check box to the little I. Either way, it's not really annoying or intrusive, but uh, I leave that up to you. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. As always, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one, and I'll see you in the next one.